Welcome back to our humble little Minecraft base. Today, we're gonna make this place look a lot less humble. In this video, I want to completely transform the small mushroom biome that's right next to my base. Specifically, I want to turn it into a volcano biome. Just like the rest of my builds, this one won't be purely aesthetic. Everything I build in this world is paired with a redstone farm that produces a resource. That way, with each build, we have more and more blocks to use to make even bigger builds in the future. If you're here just to see some building, you can skip to this time in the video. That's when I get started on the island transformation. If this is the first video you've seen from my world, let me get you caught up on what we've done so far. In episode 1, I transformed this default Minecraft stronghold into a fully functional starter base. It then got a major upgrade in episode 3 when I added several more rooms and about 15 redstone machines. Above the stronghold, I built this cherry tree which is the base's entrance and surrounded it with these end pillars which are actually a disguised creeper farm. Last time, I started developing a nearby plains biome that will eventually be given a full transformation as well. So far, I've added this giant jack-o'-lantern, which contains a villager crop farm, and this spooky lighthouse, which has tons of farmer villagers for trading, and some storage space for the crops. Okay, let's spend the next minute or so collecting all of the resources that we're gonna need today. The volcano itself is gonna be made out of five blocks. Stone, cobblestone, tough, moss blocks, and mossy cobblestone. The first three are all blocks that I have in abundance from mining in the overworld. I'm overflowing with moss blocks thanks to the moss farm that I added in episode 3. That only leaves mossy cobblestone. I'm going for a tropical feel for the volcano biome, and part of that is some nice sandy beaches. So I went to a nearby desert and collected some sand. I absolutely had to use grass blocks in this biome transformation. If you haven't seen how grass looks when you place it down in a mushroom biome, then you'll understand why later. In fact, the majority of this biome is going to be covered in grass blocks. Alright, I've got everything I need to get started on the project. But before I do, I want to talk a bit about why I chose a volcano biome as my first build. So far, everything in this area has been an homage to a past project. For example, the end pillars are a reference to the first build that I ever posted online, which was a transformation of the end island using overworld materials. The cherry tree in the very center is a reference to the starter base that I built in my last survival world, which was surrounded by a custom cherry forest. Both the tree and the pillars in this world are far better than the originals that they're based on. They kind of serve as a reminder of how far I've come as a builder. Today's project is no different. In my last world, right next to the cherry forest I mentioned, was a volcano biome. That project was the first time I had ever attempted terraforming in Minecraft. As much as I loved that build and still do, I know I can do better. And better is what we'll be doing today. This volcano biome is gonna be a lot different than the one I built in my last world. The original was very dark and gloomy. In contrast, I want to try to make this one bright and whimsical, and I think going with a tropical theme is going to be the best way to do that. I prepared the area by removing all of the sugar cane and mushrooms that populated it. That'll give me the space I need to work freely. I want to start by laying down some beaches. I put down some sand in every flat area that was at or near sea level. Later on, I plan on adding some palm trees to at least a few of the beaches. Up next, I want to cover the area in between the beaches with grass. If you weren't aware already, mushroom biomes have the best grass color in the entire game, even better than jungles. Any grass that's placed here will be very vibrant, which will help with the whimsical feel that I'm going for. Okay, now for the fun part. It's time to build the volcano. In my experience, when you're building something like this, it's best to start by deciding where the peak of your mountain is. Then build four lines of blocks in each cardinal direction, connecting the peak to the ground. These lines are very important because they will determine what the rest of the mountain looks like. I recommend adding even more guidelines on the diagonals to make your job a bit easier. Once those are in, start filling in the gaps one layer at a time. 
I decided to incorporate a gradient into the volcano, going from moss blocks to stone blocks. For now, I'm just going to make it a solid mountain and add the lava bits later. Once you get one section down, you just rinse and repeat and eventually, you'll have yourself a volcano. Something I've learned through this process is that terraforming is a lot about trusting your gut and limiting the amount of times you zoom out to look at the big picture. You've got to accept that there is no perfect way to do this. There is no exact place where each block should be. This was a really hard lesson for me to learn as someone with a long history of building perfectly symmetrical builds. But I'm learning more and more with each project. By the way, a lot of my terraforming strategy comes from watching YouTubers like FWIP and Pixel Riffs build mountains of their own. I really appreciate the helpful advice that they've given out, and if I can come even close to the beautiful things that they've created, I'll be very happy. For the lava part of the volcano, I decided to use shroom lights rather than actual lava. It's easier to control and less dangerous to have around. Before I move on to decorating the rest of the island, I want to tackle the interior of the volcano. Like I said earlier, every build has to come with a redstone feature, and the volcanoes is an automatic concrete converter. I decided to build this farm in the volcano because it's massive and requires the use of TNT. That makes it a bit difficult to decorate around, and since the volcano has this massive interior, it seemed like the perfect opportunity that I couldn't pass up. I'm not going to do much explaining on how this farm works, because, to be honest, I don't fully understand it myself either. Well, I, I understand the basics of what each section of the farm does, but I could never build something like this from scratch at my current skill level. The farm design you're seeing here was built by Razeworks, a technical minecrafter who is an absolute gift to our community. Many of the machines you see your favorite YouTubers building were designed by Razeworks, his video explaining this farm will be linked in the description below. I can't recommend it enough. Here's how the farm looks when it's being used. I'll stand right here, holding down right click to place concrete powder. There are four droppers that are automatically triggered as soon as you place four blocks, meaning your hand automatically gets restocked. The powder you place is turned into concrete and then pushed by a series of pistons. Those pistons will turn the concrete into one big block that will be picked apart one TNT at a time. Something cool about this farm is that the TNT is perfectly timed to break the blocks while they're in motion, which significantly lowers their blast resistance. Now, whenever I need concrete for a build, it won't be a super long process to make. I can just tape down my mouse button and do other things while the farm does the rest. Okay, this place is looking absolutely amazing, but I can't help but feel that something's missing. Obviously, it needs some details like tall grass and some trees, but I don't think that's quite enough. It needs another big attraction. After thinking about it for a while, I decided I was going to build a beached ship over in the flat area to the right of the volcano. I mentioned in the last episode that I plan on populating the ocean surrounding my base with a series of ships. I also explained that boat building is way outside of my comfort zone and I would be practicing in creative worlds in between episodes. It looks like that practice has paid off because this is genuinely the best boat that I have ever built. I want the ship to look like it crashed here a long time ago, so I covered the edges in azalea leaves. The reason I'm using azalea is to avoid that bright green color that comes with the mushroom biome. I absolutely love that color for the grass, but I think the azalea feels more like overgrown moss. I moved on to working on the masts and used unstripped jungle to do so. I used a mix of quartz pillar and bone blocks to make the tattered sails. Then, just like the edges of the ship, I covered them in azalea leaves. I've gotta say, building these ripped up sails is so much easier than building normal ones. Alright, there we go. A moss-covered beached ship. I'm pretty proud of this one.
Just like the volcano needed a redstone farm, I want to add one to the ship as well. With such a small space, I had to think carefully about the type of farm I wanted to build. I ended up landing on an automatic cobblestone generator, something I have never built in any of my Minecraft worlds before. The design I'm using is by another technical Minecrafter named Il Mango. Everything I said about Ray's works also applies to him. Il Mango, along with the rest of the SciCraft team, are responsible for a number of ingenious creations that continue to help the Minecraft community flourish. I can't thank him enough for the wonderful creations he makes. The real benefit of this farm is how small it is. Despite its size, it still produces an insane amount of cobblestone. Every time a TNT drops, 16 cobblestone are produced. I built a small storage room and connected it to the farm using water streams. No item filters are necessary since this farm only produces one type of item. Now, along with an easy way to convert concrete, I also have a steady supply of cobblestone. Okay, all the major pieces are in place, all that's left is to work on the details. For starters, I want to add more texture to the beaches by mixing in some sandstone. Usually, this texture only shows up on the bottom of a sandstone block, but you can get it on the top by using upside down sandstone stairs. Adding this little bit of texture may not make much of a difference, but I wanted to add it nonetheless. Now it's time to add some palm trees to the beaches. These took a bit of trial and error to get right, and I'm sure there are better ways to make palm trees, but I'm happy with how mine turned out. I built them pretty sparingly, and tried not to obstruct the view of the ship too much. After putting down some grass, the biome was officially finished. Thank you for watching till the end of this video. I hope you liked the volcano biome build. As much as I loved my first volcano biome, I think it's safe to say that this one is a big improvement. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you'll stick around for the next project.